So, um, I'm making this recording right after I've already finished editing the video, because I realize I sound like a real nasally bitch, and I just want to let you guys know ahead of time, I'm sorry for that. I just woke up, and anyone who's been watching my videos recently knows that I'm being hit with a huge wave of allergies, and that tends to affect me right when I wake up. So, yeah. <laughs> Believe it or not, there was a time when I was younger where I still didn't really play games like Metal Gear or Far Cry or all the staples that I'm used to playing right now. Hell, I didn't even really play COD when I was really, really younger, like an early teenager. What I did play, what I religiously played, of course you already know about Halo, like I never shut up about that, but then there were also games like Infamous or Batman Arkham City that were like the staples of what I'd play when I get home from school. My parents said it's alright to turn on the console. I'd go in all excited and these would be the games that I would play. But there was another game that kind of marked like the ending of my childhood and the start of like adolescence even though I was already a teenager at that point. It marked that point before I started becoming more recognizable to the person that I was going to be later on in life. It was the game that I really got into right before I discovered Metal Gear, right before Far Cry 4's map editor became a staple in, you know, what I would do when I got home from school. And that game was The Last of Us. Now I don't need to be the one to tell you that Last of Us had a very lasting impact on everyone that played it and liked it. There was something really special about this game. The narrative and presentation of it was done in a way with such elegance and masterwork that we hadn't really seen before. You really got involved in Joel and Ellie's story and the disconnects between the cutscene and the gameplay were minimal, it was cinematic storytelling at its peak. And while I acknowledge that that cinematic storytelling has definitely left a horrible stigma on games that took a very long time to get over, like I think it was all the way up until Devil May Cry 5 that we started being able to take games that were just games seriously again. But aside from all that, like this really was a special game, especially to me. This was a game that I had a very deep attachment to. This was a game that I would play when I was happy, when I was sad, and it would always end up making me feel better. Getting engrossed in Joel and Ellie's story, but also finding all the little details of dialogue and interactions in the actual gameplay. I must have played through The Last of Us story more than 50 times at least. And even when my playthroughs were well above the double digits, I would still discover new things. A new thing Ellie could say. A new reaction she would have if I did a certain thing in a certain segment. Or things that Joel would say he would do. New animations in the combat. A lot of people complain that Last of Us gameplay is lackluster. I don't think so. Because there's just so much in there, it's just not all surface level. Now of course the AI is a bit stupid and wonky and nowhere near as impressive as they promised with that E3 trailer, but at that point in time a lot of games and their marketing were deceptive. You could say that it's the same way now, but now we're a lot more aware of that kind of bullshit. But still, there was something really special with The Last of Us. But now it feels like its corpse is being paraded. Now, I want to take, you know, this opportunity in this video to say that, like, yeah, I'm kind of over The Last of Us 2. And looking back on it now, or honestly just looking back at myself and my reactions to it when it came out two years ago, I think I realized why I don't like it. You see, back towards 2020, or hell, even 2019 or 2018, I was still, like, towards the start of my university, and... I was going through a phase where I think everyone goes through a phase towards the beginning of university where you become like really political one way or the other and I definitely leaned more on like the right wing side so naturally I reconciled and justified and explained everything that I came across as you know 
not liking it because of, oh, SJW this, or, oh, it includes these kind of politics, or whatever, right? But now I'd like to think that I've kind of stepped away from that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff doesn't really, like, bother me. Like, believe whatever you want to believe politically. Date whoever you want to date. And another helicopter. There we go. Okay, I think it's gone. Yeah, anyways, that stuff doesn't bother me. Like, yeah, I realize that Last of Us 2 doesn't bother me because Ellie says bigot sandwiches at some point or because of all the gay stuff that's in there. I mean, I love the first Last of Us game and we included that kind of stuff too, so that doesn't really serve as a valid point to criticize, you know, Last of Us 2. I like the Left Behind DLC and, again, had a lot of that kind of stuff, so there is something else, or there is something else, that's lacking in Last of Us 2 that it, it just didn't have with Last of Us 1, and now that Last of Us 1's corpse is being paraded with a remake, even though the game is less than 10 years old, it just feels so cash cow. It feels like they're just... Like, go ahead and watch the trailers for Last of Us and the remake for it. I'm not going to include it here just because I know that's going to get, like, copy striked or taken down right away. I know how Naughty Dog is when it comes to critiquing their work nowadays. But, like, it's just all of them sitting down on chairs being really pretentious, being like, oh, yeah, we know the impact that this game had. Oh, it's really just something amazing, and we are bringing it with this whole new technology on PS5 and making it so much- Just like, shut the fuck up. Like, there's no heart in what they're doing with this now. The remake will, doesn't have the same heart. Last of Us 2 didn't have the same heart. Like, go ahead, play through The Last of Us 1, my favorite chapter in the game, The Fall Chapter. In that chapter right there, you have this moment where Joel and Ellie just have a sit down and talk about like all the stuff they've been repressing throughout the entire game and you just get this blowout where joel just comes out and says you're not my daughter i'm not your dad kind of breaking that tension that was there between them hurting ellie's feelings hurting his own but then after they have that fight they realize that like there's still something special there for each other they're both fulfilling a need in each other's lives and that justifies what happens later on in the game because you know when Ellie's being dissected in order to save the human race and, you know, Joel is there and he goes in and he kills all those people to stop it. I mean, th it was left ambiguous, right? So people could go through it and think, oh yeah, he's the bad guy or he's the good guy. Personally, I think he's the good guy. If someone I loved was in that position to what? Save the human race? Have you met the human race in the game? Or you know what? Fuck that. Have you met the human race in real life? Like, fuck all that. For some abstract vaccine that might help them? No, 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 no. But it was left ambiguous enough to the point where it's like, if you did feel like he was the bad guy, you could also go with that route there. And the game ends off on that note, and that's really freaking powerful. But then the sequel comes, and it's like, it doesn't even try to rival scenes with as much heart as what you got in that one breaking the ice moment with Joel and Ellie. It doesn't try to rival the ambiguity. The only thing that Last of Us 2 does to match the tension and heart of the first game is by destroying it in that one scene, killing Joel. And it's like, okay, you, you can do that with your sequel, you can do that with your game, but then you notice every other scene in the game is lacking or dependent on that one scene that happens near the beginning. Last of Us 1 had a gut punch scene that set the context for a lot of everything else in the game, but it didn't depend on it all the way through. In Last of Us 2, that's really all it had to throw at us, because all of the other interactions and characters introduced never have as much punch as moments that we got with Joel and Ellie, like in that cabin in the Tommy section. Last of Us just doesn't have that heart anymore. The team doesn't have that heart. They did something new. They did something amazing. They achieved something that games didn't really achieve up until that point, and everyone loved it, yours truly included. But that's not what's happening now. 
and that's not how the remake is gonna feel because you're you're just they could go and just give it better graphics and improve like the combat gameplay and stuff like that you know what that would be fun as fuck because last of us has this brutal and visceral combat that's just so addictive but the new ethos that naughty dog has the lack of heart that they have even if they change nothing within the game, I know it's gonna bleed through. And as someone that was so deeply impacted by the first game and for a large part of my life, that game meant so much to me and had so much power to make me feel better even when I was at my like lowest points, it really sucks to see. And I really wish they would just leave Last of Us alone. Anyways, this has been Pliskin. Over and out.